Are you hungry? Are you thirsty? Can we offer libations? Hello, Julia Pierpont from Xinhua News of China. Hello. And you guys are amazing, fabulous work. Thank you very much for that. I'm really curious how, what you think or how you think the Time's Up movement factors into this amazing story about focusing on a woman finding her own voice. I think the timing of the movement making a resurgence, because this is certainly not the first time we've been talking about the issues that women face in the workplace or walking through the world, but the resurgence of this movement with a new name had fortuitous timing with the release of the show. I think it made people view the show and welcome the show with new eyes. But the truth is, Midge's story is one that so many women have experienced in one form or another before and will again. Next question with Westwood One in the back. Thank you. Hi, congratulations. Thank you. Jim Roop with Westwood One News. Uh, this show did not take very long at all to really take off. So does anything surprise you at all about the success of this show? Everything. All of it, all of it, everything. <laughs> the whole thing. The whole thing's a big surprise. Yeah, you don't go to work I wasn't surprised. Any of it. I was Brian, surprised. Brian, Brian wasn't surprised. surprised at all. Sorry. Brian was a little disappointed, actually. <laughs> I, I personally was very surprised how um, it's taken off in other countries um, other than America. I thought that, you know, it's about a Jewish family, and I thought it, was, it would resonate with Jewish people, but I've had people come up to me from India, from China, uh, telling me that you know, it resonated with them as well, mostly, I think, because of the family aspect to it, because family is, uh, is universal. Next question with Jeannie Wolf. Hi. Hi. Um, well, some of the people that I talked to coming through said, no surprise at all, that from the first reading, they knew they were part of something special. So, yeah. <laughs> That what we were doing would be special for us. We didn't know that the world would agree. How, how, how has this feeling of success inspired what you do? Did it scare you at all? Did it make you feel like, oh, how do we live up to this? Or did it like, whoo, we're on a winner, let's take this ride? Well, I'd say scary and thrilling. It's a combination of lots of feelings, but of course it's scary. Okay. It's scary and thrilling, but of course it's scary when you are so celebrated and then you feel an even bigger responsibility to the audience that's embraced you. So that's scary, but thrilling and inspiring and all those things. Yeah. Um, I, I don't think I was prepared at this point in my life, in that sort of midlife time, to meet someone that's youthful the way this gorgeous woman is to my right that plays our daughter. And I have to say, to learn every day from her that's a, a thrilling joy, too, is to, is to actually get inspired by your fellow actors, and particularly those like Miss Rachel Brosnahan. Tony, you've been involved in this kind of, for a long time. Did you feel the success of this? Did you feel the hope uh, of this? Well, you never know when you get into something, uh, of course. And um, <clears throat> I've, I've given up trying to predict whether something will work or not work. Um, very often, I really am I'm, I'm convinced it will work, and I'm, I'm always wrong. And this time, <laughs> this time, I wasn't wrong. Uh, I had a really good feeling about it because of the, the high level of writing and this unbelievable cast, and, and just not, a, not just an amazing group of actors, but perfectly cast in their roles. And so um, I, I, I get to say for once in all of these years that I've I was right. <laughs> Next question with Hollywood Life. Hi, Russ from Hollywood Life right here. Um, what doors still need to be open for women in Hollywood, do you think? I mean, there's... The, the... A lot of doors. Um, while we've... <laughs> thank you, Kevin. <laughs> um, while we've come... We've come a long way. Um, we're, we're opening the door to new discussions. I think we're talking a lot about a lot of the right things, but still, what's the study that came out? 4% of dire directors of the top 1,200 films in the last 10 years have been directed by women. So while we're talking a lot about it, we're still, we still have yet to follow through with the kind of action that is representative of what 
women deserve, and, and, it's, and it's even harder for women of color. We're still, we're still beginning to have that conversation. We have a lot of work to do, but I feel very hopeful about the way the industry is coming together to collectively make this change. But we can't stop. This is just the beginning. Last question with Twitter. Hi. Hi, guys. Hi. I'm Keaton, um, and I'm asking a question on behalf of Jenna on Twitter. And she wants to know, when did you guys know the project you were working on was so special? And after you guys answered this question, if anyone would like to thank somebody that they haven't had a chance to thank, they can go find Jonathan over there, and he'll do a video, and we'll post it on social media for you, because I know you have such a great ensemble cast. But yeah, when did you guys know this was such a special project? From the time, for me, from the time I got to the bottom of the first page of the script, I, I couldn't have possibly wanted to be more a part of this project, and I'm so glad to be here. What about you guys? Do you? Longer Zach, than the first Brian? Page. It read like magic, but I, I don't think I really knew until there was a question from Twitter from Jenna. That's really... <laughs> <laughs> thank you, Jenna. I mean, this was great, but that was... <laughs> thank you. Thank you, that was the last question. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for watching. And thank you for all of your support. It's really meant the world to us. Thank you.